Hi, I'm Jeff Nickel from Promochrome Technologies. And I'm Ian Wen from Promochrome Technologies. Today, we are going to share with you how the SPEO3 8-channel system can automate the extraction procedure of EPA draft method 1633. Important considerations such as sample volume, matrices, and container rinsing will be covered. And for labs that already have modified or in-house methods for non-potables, these features can apply to your extractions as well. Jeff, why don't we get started? Sounds great, Ian. What we have here is the SPEO3 system. It measures just 26 inches wide, which includes the eight samples that we'll be extracting. That's actually quite compact, because as we all know, it's always a challenge to find benchtop space in labs. No kidding. This small footprint also allows the SPEO3 to be placed in a fume hood if required. Now, let's take a look at the main components of the system. Up to six different solvents can be mounted on top, and we'll be using five for EPA method 1633. The SPE cartridges are easily accessible from the front, and we offer adapters compatible with one, three, six, 12, and 20 milliliter cartridges. Up to two fractions can be collected and easily accessed. And the two waste lines here serve to separate aqueous and organic waste. The samples we have here are mounted with four on each side, similar to the configuration for EPA methods 537 and 533. Compared to these drinking water methods, what can we expect to be different for EPA method 1633? Good question. Method 1633 was designed to address non-potable matrices. Therefore, the system we are showing today has the Mod 00P Volume Matrix Plus configuration to handle sample particulates and a wider range of sample sizes. If you look at this sample bottle adapter, You'll notice there are two lines, whereas the original configuration for methods 537 and 533 only has one. The main line is responsible for drawing sample and comes with a lure fitting for our high capacity inline filters. The additional line on the side is used for rinsing the sample bottles and it bypasses the main line. Interesting. So what you're saying is that by using this dual line design, the solvent rinse is not impeded by particulates that are trapped in the inline filter which makes it more suitable for non-potable samples. You also mentioned that the Mozio 0P configuration is compatible with a wider range of sample sizes? Absolutely. Allow me to go through all the mounting options for EPA method 1633. These racks here are compatible with any plastic bottles up to 250 milliliters. The upside down mounting maximizes sample transfer and is easy to attach the bottles. The adapter caps can also be taken off to be sonicated if necessary. For larger volume samples, such as 500 milliliters and one liter, we have an upright mounting option using an integrated sample line with a top-down rinsing mechanism. The rinsing is showcased in our Mod 00P bottle rinsing video, and you can find the link in the description below. Based on EPA method 1633, Solid and tissue samples are first extracted using solvents, then decanted into 60 milliliter glass tubes before SPE cleanup. So in this case, simply replace the bottom tubing with a shorter one and insert the sample line directly. Wow, that's actually quite the range of mounting options. I suppose labs that are using any sample container can benefit from this flexibility? You're absolutely right. With the SPE03, your options are kept open. This configuration here would work with drinking and non-drinking water methods, whether they're standardized or developed in-house. Great, so before we start extracting, can you tell us more about these inline filters and how they handle different matrices? Of course. As the name suggests, the inline filter is connected directly to the sample line. It serves to keep out sample particulates that can A, clog the SPE cartridges, and B, wear out the internal components of any automated system. That's a pretty useful feature that will save time from not having to filter some of these samples. Although, I know there's some debate on whether filtering the samples could lead to inaccurate measurements. You raise a good point, and in this case, we are not actually pre-filtering the samples. With the inline filters, the whole sample passes through as it is extracted. During the bottle rinsing steps, the solvent used to rinse the bottles can then be drawn through the inline filters to recover any trapped analytes. I see, you know, that actually reminds me of when we used to pack glass wool in SPE cartridges to prevent clogging, in which case the samples and solvents would still flow through the glass wool and minimizes any impact on recovery. That's definitely a good approach for manual extraction. And in fact, the draft method 1633 specifically calls for this measure. 
we have a more compact anti-clogging frit for the same purpose, and it can be easily inserted into any standard cartridge. However, using the inline filters is a further step to keep particulates out of the entire system. Good to know that there are both options. Now, can you give us some examples of how much particulates these high capacity filters can handle? Certainly. Our inline filters can hold much more than typical syringe filters. Using draft method 1633 as a reference, aqueous samples containing up to 50 milligrams of suspended solids can be extracted. Although, from our experience working with many customers, surface and wastewater samples can sometimes exceed this particulate level. For our demo, I have prepared three samples with 50 milligrams, 500 milligrams, and one gram of soil to showcase the filtration properties. Of course, other factors such as particulate size, distribution, and sample viscosity will also come into play in real situations. Okay, let's see how these samples run. Now that the SPE03 is fully set up, let me bring up the built-in EPA method 1633. In accordance with the EPA procedure, the method consists of five main steps. Preconditioning, sample loading, bottle and cartridge rinsing, nitrogen drying of the cartridges, and a final bottle rinse and elution. To begin, simply tap start. At this point, the interface reminds you how much of each solvent will be consumed, so you can ensure that there is enough in each solvent bottle. I can see that the first conditioning step is now highlighted in green, and solvent 5, which is assigned to 1% basic methanol, is being delivered through the SP cartridges. How is this achieved? Ah, if you look behind the SPE cartridges, you'll see two positive pressure syringe pumps, each containing four syringes that all push the solvent through at the same program flow rate. The multi-channel valve directs liquid between the solvents, cartridges, and samples. You mentioned positive pressure, what are some of the advantages of using positive pressure during an extraction? Well, as opposed to a vacuum pump, using positive pressure to control liquid flow ensures that the flow rate remains uniform across all eight cartridges. It is also much more resistant to clogging and it prevents the cartridge from drying out during sample loading. And I know some cartridges have to remain wet during sample loading for maximizing analyte retention. Alright, so we're just finished with the basic methanol preconditioning and formic acid equilibration steps. The pumps are now drawing from the eight samples and delivering them through the SP cartridges. That's right, you can already see the inline filter doing its job to trap sample particulates. Well, here's another question for you. I know most labs never receive samples that are exactly 250 milliliters or 500 milliliters. So what would you recommend in terms of setting the sample loading volume? Fortunately, that's no problem at all for the SP E03 you can simply program a volume that's slightly larger than the actual sample volume. In this case, these 250 milliliter sample bottles can only hold 279 milliliters at maximum, so we programmed the step to add 279 milliliters. And if you had to estimate, how long would a full extraction take? That really depends on the sample volume and flow rate. Based on the five milliliter per minute sample loading speed prescribed by draft method 1633, it will take the SPE03 just under 100 minutes to extract all eight samples at 250 milliliters. For 60 milliliters solid and tissue extracts, it will only take about 40 minutes. Sample loading speed is something that can be optimized, and we have seen good results even at 8 milliliters per minute, which further reduces the extraction time by 20 minutes. Great, and since it's automated, we can set it and forget it. See you after lunch then? You bet. It's been 60 minutes and we're just about done with the sample loading. Checking on the inline filters, they've caught a considerable amount of particulates, especially with increasing soil content. Now looking at the SPE cartridges, the ones with soil are more discolored, but the liquid levels are no higher than our clean samples. This shows that the inline filters have done their job to prevent particulates from clogging the cartridges. What did I miss? Oh look, all the samples are gone. I guess it's time to rinse the bottles. I got the left side. That won't be necessary. The configuration we have will automatically rinse the bottles and even shake them to mimic manual rinsing. The goal is to have the full extraction performed without any supervision. This is quite a useful feature, especially because PFAS extractions involve multiple rinsing steps. And it's great to know that I don't have to babysit the system. I can see that the rinse 8 is now being drawn through the inline filters 
which means for the final rinse with the elution solvent, we can recover the trapped analytes? That's the idea. If necessary, the SPEO3 can even push the rinsate through the filters again and draw it back to further recover any compounds that are highly adsorbent. The system is now pushing all the rinsate through the SPE cartridges. I'm hearing a hissing sound. What's happening now? That's the beginning of the cartridge drying step. We are again using positive pressure, which comes from a pressurized nitrogen or air source. Got it. And for draft method 1633, we're just doing a quick drying step to preserve the more volatile compounds. Precisely. And we're now moving on to the final rinse and elution. A similar bottle rinse is performed this time with 1% basic methanol, after which the fraction tray moves in automatically to position the collection tubes directly under the SPE cartridges. The eluents are then collected in a dropwise fashion. After the final step, the tray moves back out to give easy access to the tubes. Great, and that audible beep means we're done for the day. It's always music to my ears. We hope this video has been helpful in showcasing how the SPEO3 can perform all the necessary steps of PFAS cartridge extraction. Although we're using EPA Draft Method 1633 as a main example, this really applies to any non-potable methods that your lab might be running. Thank you for watching, and you're welcome to submit any inquiries to info at promochrome.com.